Hey everyone, Mr. McIntosh here, and Apple just dropped a surprise update, Mac OS Sequoia 15.1.1. In this video, we're gonna go over whether you should install this and what's included in this update. We're gonna go over it on both platforms, our Intel T2 Mac Mini and our Apple Silicon M1 MacBook Air. Plus, we're gonna do a sneak peek on the compatibility with unsupported Macs with Open Core Legacy Patcher 2.1.2. You're gonna wanna stick around for this one. Let's jump in and get started. The 15.1.1 update came out of nowhere today. It was dropped right at 12 o'clock noon Central central daylight time, but we were expecting maybe a beta today or something like that. But instead we got a public release drop. Plus it was split into two different releases, 15.1.1 for Apple Silicon M3 and lower all the way back to Intel. And then a separate release for M4 Macs, the new iMac, the new Mac Mini, and the new MacBook Pros. So that's why there's two different releases. You gotta keep an eye on that if you're trying to download the IPSW or the full installer. There was also an issue that this update came out so fast that Apple forgot to publish the decryption keys for the IPSWs for Vision OS and Mac OS. And that prevented Apple Configurator 2 restores from actually completing. I posted this after doing a test to make sure that it was not working properly with restoring a system with Apple Configurator 2. And sure enough, the error was happening. The good news is I can report as of nine o'clock PM tonight, Apple has resolved this issue. And I tested this and it worked and we should be able to restore our systems with Apple Configurator 2 again. So it's great that Apple was able to get that resolved. Along with the 15.1 update, we also got iOS and iPad OS 18 18.1 and then for older devices still on 17 we got 17.7.2 and we got vision os 2.1.1 there was no associated update for mac os sonoma or mac os ventura or tv os watch os or audio os for home pods our demonstration mac for this update is our m1 macbook air 2020 for the update all we need to do is go into system settings and we should see software update available right here and then once we click on that, we should see it right here under the available updates. What we do for our testing is I make sure that I have my fake Apple ID that for use for testing, logged in with Find My enabled, and File Vault 2 encryption is enabled. If we wanna get more information, we can click on the more info. And the good news is Apple has finally fixed this. You might remember from my previous updates that the information in this box was broken. So I'm glad that Apple was able to fix that. For 15.1 to 15.1.1 is 1.29 gigabytes. And that's the smallest for Apple silicon because we're only making one small jump from 15.1 to 15.1.1. If you're back farther, like 15.01, it's going to be larger. All we need to do is click on update now and agree. And we need to type in our password for Apple Silicon and we'll start downloading. Now we're going to test to see how long the update takes to prepare and install. And when I see the prepare, if you want to check your settings, you can go into automatic updates and see if download new updates is available. Now we've talked about this a lot before, especially for unsupported Macs, we want to have that off. But for our supported Macs, we can leave that on. And what it's going to do is going to download and prepare it at the same time. So we'll let this download prepare and we'll keep a track on how long it takes to install. Okay, we're back up after the update. What is the build version of the 15.1.1 update? It is 24B91. And remember we said that if you have an N4, a newer Mac, it's gonna be 24B2091. So that's your build version. How long did it take to install the 15.1.1 update? Well, on our Intel Mac mini, it took five minutes to prepare the update. And then after the reboot, 13 minutes to install the update for a total of 18 minutes start to finish. And that's right in line with our previous point release update of 15.01 at around 19 minutes and definitely less than a full featured update at 25 minutes for 15.1. On our Apple Silicon side, we have four minutes on the preparation and only five minutes on the actual install to the reboot for a total of nine minutes. And that puts us right in alignment again with the 15.0.1 point release update and then 14 minutes for a 15.1. So you can definitely see how much faster the Apple Silicon updates install compared to the Intel side. When we're looking at the size of the update, we saw that the Apple Silicon was 1.29 gigabytes. The Intel Delta update from 15.1 was only 651 megabytes. If you're doing an unsupported Mac with Open Core Legacy Patcher, your update size is going to be 14.53 gigabytes. Now let's take a look at the firmware side of things. 
on our Apple Silicon, the firmware was not updated. It is the same as the Sequoia 15.1 update. On the OS loader, same thing. On the T2 Bridge OS side, it is also the same as the 15.1 update. No update there. And the same is with the firmware update. Now on Safari, that is totally different to 18.1.1. And this was also released for macOS Sonoma and macOS Ventura as an individual update to fix that WebKit vulnerability. Now let's take a look at what's new in the 15.1.1 update. And we can see here, this update provides important security fixes and is recommended for all users. What we don't see is any bug fixes. So even if there wasn't any specific bug fixes that were pointed out, like in previous releases, only security is in this update. So let's take a look at the Apple security update page. In the security content page, if we scroll down, we see two specific MacOS Sequoia 15.1.1 fixes here. First is in the JavaScript core available for MacOS Sequoia. Impact processing a maliciously crafted web content may lead to arbitrary code execution. Apple is aware of a report that this issue may have been actively exploited on Intel-based systems. This issue was addressed with improved checks. And this is coming from the Google Threat Analysis Group. Now this is a very elite team of security researchers that even look into national threats from other nations that are targeting maybe high profile people or groups. If you see something from the Google Threat Analysis Group, it's something to definitely take a closer look at. And and the fact that this has already been reported and it's a zero day. What is a zero day? A zero day is something that was reported to Apple and they had to push out a fix, but they didn't know about it before it was fully released. So that's the JavaScript core. And on the WebKit side for Mac OS Sequoia, the same thing. Now, when it says Intel based Mac systems, thinking about that a little bit, that doesn't necessarily mean this is Intel only because why would Apple then target the M4 machines and other Apple Silicon devices? It's very possible that this exploit was not reported yet for Apple Silicon devices or was not as vulnerable, but we don't fully know that yet. But all we do know is, is that Apple has included these fixes in the newer Apple Silicon devices. If we go back and we look at the Safari update for macOS Ventura and macOS Sonoma, we can see the JavaScript core and the WebKit. So that does affect macOS Sonoma and macOS Ventura, but you can fix it by installing the latest version of Safari. The reason why the 15.1.1 one update is being released and not just Safari is because Apple does not break out Safari separately for the latest operating system. It is included in the OS and it's not a separate OS update. So that gives you a better understanding of the security update information here. Now let's take a look at the Geekbench 6 benchmark scores for our Intel T2 Mac Mini. On 15.1, we had a 15.31 and a 66.36. And once we updated 15.11, we've got a 14.83 and a 66.30, so a little less, but still within specs. And for M1 Apple Silicon, we've got a 23.60 on 15.1 and an 88.38 for the multi-score. On our 15.1.1, 23.94 and an 86.06. Now let's do a little preview for our unsupported Macs running OpenCore Legacy Patcher 2.1.2, the latest release. Now I always come out with a separate video because I do all the testing against the latest operating system to make sure the systems run okay. But I always wanna give a little bit of a sneak peek in this to give you an idea of what's going on here. Our demonstration Mac are always is our first one is our caching server, which is our Mac Pro late 2013, running our AMD GPU on 15.1.1, and we have no issues whatsoever and the update went very smoothly. Our second device that we wanted to test is our little mini MacBook Retina early 2016 MacBook running 15.1.1 with the latest version of the patcher and there was no issues whatsoever on the update. And again we'll have all of our tests in the update on Open Core Legacy Patcher for unsupported Macs coming up really soon. Now let's go over my recommendation. Should you install the Mac OS Sequoia 15.1.1 update? For supported Macs, definitely 100%. And the zero day exploited vulnerabilities out there already are enough to protect your Mac to be able to make sure that you are safe. Apple wouldn't go through all of this big deal if it wasn't a really big deal to keep your Mac secure. Or they would have just waited for 15.2. So those are some high level vulnerabilities that you want to be able to protect yourself from. Now let's talk about unsupported Macs. That's 
also protected because Safari is also included in that update and those vulnerabilities are patched for unsupported Macs too. So those machines are protected. So I do recommend doing that, but we will we'll do that full recommendation once we do our unsupported Mac video. Let me know how you're doing in the comments. Have you updated to 15.1.1 yet? Are you still on Mac OS Sonoma or Ventura or an even older OS? Where are you at on your supported Mac? Let me know in the comments and we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks.